What's good everyone, it's your boy Cool Kid Croc here, and welcome to a Minecraft Survival Progression series. Aw, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I know nobody asked for this, but I did. So with quarantine going on, I got a lot more time, and I figured I'd open up a Minecraft world. I want to do this on Bedrock or Windows 10, just that way I can have a cross-platform saves, as well as get some achievements and other stuff. So this will be a vanilla world, you know, no mods or mashup hacks, stuff like that, just plain old Minecraft as it is right now. I do want to look into those things eventually, but... I haven't played Minecraft for like 3 or 4 years since PS4, so while I have like thousands of hours of experience, I'm pretty shit right now because I don't remember much. But I do grab a starting map and I make the world size infinite, and the seed name is going to be Cool Kid Croc. So if any of you guys at home like the world that I'm playing on and want the same world, well, you, you know what the seed name is, it isn't too hard. For that though, I booted up the world and loading into it. It looks pretty decent to start out with. We're in a grassy field area, you know, a few hills and water. And the starter map shows we're in the direct middle of it. First thing we need to do, though, is grab some wood, of course. So I went over to a tree and grabbed the whole tree with my fist. It takes a bit of time, but, I mean, it, it's better than fucking not progressing. <laughs> Luckily, right next to this forest, too, there's a huge open area. Like, not a huge, huge area, but a nice open area, so... I decided I'd probably want to build somewhere around here. I could put my crafting table down here and at least spot it from a distance. And then with that down, I could play. With that down, I could make the tools that I needed. I really only needed a wooden pickaxe right now. What I'm going to be doing is just mining out this cobblestone. That way, I can get the stone tools. Stone is a lot better than wood, and I really usually skip the wooding phase. You know, I just grab a wooden pickaxe and go straight to stone tool. And after I grabbed almost 30 cobblestone, I made my way out of the little hole over there and, and back to the crafting table so I can craft my stone tools. So a sword, an axe, a pickaxe, and a shovel is really all I need for now. I won't need the hoe until I start to go farming. Then after that, I went around killing some cows. I'm trying to kill lots early on so I can get leather and before I even have a cow farm stir it up because enchanting is really useful as well as they give you food. With what I had, I could at least craft a furnace and then put it right next down to the crafting table. This way I'd be able to cook all the raw meat that I was getting from the animals and I wouldn't have to starve to death. While the meat cooked, I continued to hunt more animals that were around. This area is pretty easy to find different animals and stuff, you know. There's wood, there's trees. There's lots of open area, it's pretty decent in all honesty. I made sure to have enough wood for fuel, that way I could burn, that way I could cook all of this food. And then I was able to save myself from starvation. I also found the last sheep that I needed, so I had all three wool that I would need to craft a bed. With this though, I needed a little bit more wood because I didn't have enough to really make a house. At this time, I would at least be doing the outline of it, so... Trying to figure out an outline for a starter house is always a pain. If you don't spend a few days gathering materials, it's probably going to look like shit. So I try to make it look not like shit as much as I could. Making the oak wood so corners sort of three along with the birch in the middle makes it look a little bit nicer. And placing down my bed right when it was nighttime meant no monsters would be attacking me. As far as building up the walls of it, it's pretty straightforward. I just decided to go up by two at first and then I went up an extra layer just because I want the extra room in the house. And I had plenty of wood to finish all of this at least for the walls. And afterwards, now that that's done, I can at least put my crafting table and furnace into the house. So I grab those and put them next to the bed. Now if the wall's done, I need to work on a roof. Now making a roof in Minecraft is kind of complicated if you don't remember how to. I don't remember how to that much, so I did the best that I could here by starting out with two different slabs, one out on each side. And then we're also going one out on each side of like the door frame and stuff, so it looks... Like it's a little bit longer. I then decided to go for two high oak plank walls and then stairs. This way it makes sort of like a roof like shape. It's not perfect but for a small house you know it looks like it at least fits it. After that I just had to cover up the small spot that was above the walls and near where we were making the roof and then I connected the roof with the stairs all around it. That way you don't have to see the cobblestone from outside. After that though it was pretty much there. I mean the house is done tech but I still wanted to add a lot more to it because it looked uh, pretty fucking chunky. First off this little strip of birch wood in the front I decided to get rid of. I just filled it back up with normal oak wood. Then for the roof I decided to go one more slab. That way it looked a little bit more rounded it looks sort of like ch blocky or choppy you know from the front so 
Adding this made it look a little bit more like it was all connected. And then afterwards, I could remove the stairs that I'd placed beside it because the roof was now finished. All that needs to be worked on now really is just the exterior and interior. So I began by destroying all the floor inside of the house. That way I could replace it with something else. There's not too many choices for what we're going to use, so I'm just going to use some plain cobblestone. That way I could at least grab some coal and iron as well. Coming across the first iron vein is always good. Iron tools are quite a bit better than stone tools, of course and then diamond is the last tier that we're looking for and I haven't really been mining too much like you can get iron on day one no problem but at least I found some while walking by some cobblestone after that I put all the cobblestone down inside of the house for the floor of it that way we don't have to walk on dirt and with that all I needed to do was craft myself a door and then place it and the house was pretty much done I go to bed in there and it was pretty nice. By morning time, most of the mobs other than creepers are burning alive. So that's why I usually want to go to sleep at night. Now there's this little hole right beside our base. So I decided that this would probably be a good spot to build a mine at. There's a lot of different ways you can build mines and ways to make them efficient. So I'll keep note of that spot. Afterwards though, I wanted to get some more birch wood because I wanted to design the house a little bit more than it already is. By using birch fence, I can kind of place these uh, sort of like pillars on a roof. And around the building mostly on the corners they work really well trying to figure out a way to exactly make them look the best is kind of difficult but working with what we have we can at least make it so it doesn't just look like you know it's a square being held together it does have some uh, exterior stability and afterwards I, I forgot to connect the side of it there but other than that the house is pretty much complete it was looking a lot nicer now I did want to add some finishing touches though so I went around collected some rose bushes some flowers and then some yellow ones that way I could go over to the base and then just start to place them around the house you know the area that we're in looks very uh just like ran like random like human made sort of there's no grass and other stuff around so putting this stuff in makes it look a little bit more genuine and realistic and I also was able to find some roses to put in there too now with that though it just looks a lot better than if it wasn't there you know adds color adds detail and just looks pretty fucking pleasant for a starter minecraft home on like day two or three we're doing pretty good in the morning i would carve out the front of our base because i was gonna make sure that we had a little pathway going from the door outwards this can connect to our other buildings and other things that we build so i'm for now i'm planning to make it out of gravel but i didn't have much so i just did cobblestone for the time being now i'll put up a double chest in the building there i do want to make a storage room as one of the first things but for now we're gonna have to store some of the stuff in this house here just all in like random formats really but I decided to go back mining because i wanted to grab some more iron and other things coal is very much needed as we can make torches out of it and once you have torches you can basically go mining even more i mean you can't like see fuck all in there without the light source so having torches always helps a shit ton it also keeps monsters from spawning so on your way back you don't have to worry about being blown up by creepers but i was able to find all the iron and coal that i needed in there and once i had some cobblestone and the other things that i went for i could make my way out and over at my house monsters spawned there because i was out for a bit there was a spider a creeper and a zombie now a spider and zombie aren't too much of a threat but a creeper you know if you don't know they, they fucking explode and they can ruin your house if they're near it. So you have to like t hit it, then run back, hit it, then run back. It's very annoying, but we can get around this later on in game. Now I want to make sure that my house was at least lit up because I didn't do that beforehand. Now monsters can't be spawning in here. And after I smelted enough iron, I was able to craft myself a decent suit of armor. Now the armor is all pretty good up to the chest plate, but once you put on the helmet, that's where the magic happens. You see... The eyes are no longer there. One of my favorite things about this OG skin and why I got my name and everything from it just because I couldn't give up the skin with this gimmick. I also went and found the shield that is there. I haven't played with the shield before so I put that on and I don't like it to be. It, it takes up too much room in my opinion on my screen so I think it will be useful eventually but for now i'm not really going to be using it now, i wanted to go mining again though but this time in a different way instead of just looking around for stuff i was going to do some strip mining so for those who have never done this basically i dig down like this so i don't run into lava by accident and jump into it then once i get to y coordinate 12 that is where diamonds are likely to spawn pretty sure it's 15 and under or something but 
once I got to coordinate 12, I just carved out a little square spot here. That way, I had a little bit of room to work with. So, mining into the wall, you're able to find a shit ton at this level. Basically, anything that you really need, you know. I was finding iron, redstone, everything that I really need early on in game. It wasn't too long until I was just digging through with a cobblestone and dirt. And then I ended up finding a little cave system. This leads to like a ravine. And they're all right to explore. You can sometimes find good stuff, especially here. I know there will be obsidian because of the lava and water, but I don't really want to look in there yet, so I went back to strip mining. I also made sure to have enough wood on me, that way I could craft an extra crafting table and pickaxe, and luckily I did because right after that I ran into my first diamond vein. This was a good one too, nine diamonds, so that's you know, just both the most that you can get from a diamond vein. Seeing as this is episode one, we're doing pretty good in progress. So I went on to mine just until my pickaxe basically broke, and then my inventory was looking pretty stacked now. So I head back to the base, and then put all my stuff in the chest. But I try to do this in somewhat of an even order, because I'm gonna have to rearrange it later. But for the time being, we're doing pretty good. We're set on iron, and we're starting to build up a diamond supply. With diamonds, there's only a few things that I really essentially need. I wanted to get a pickaxe, a shovel, and a sword out of diamonds, and then I would save the other three diamonds for another time, like another pickaxe or something. Afterwards, I mined out the cobblestone that was in front of a house and replaced all of that with gravel. Now, trying to make this little gravel road, it isn't ideal. I might use a different material eventually, but for now, it is better than nothing. I also ran into my first llama trader. I don't really know if I've seen these guys before or not, they're just like a normal trader with llamas on them. They have pretty shit trades, at least the guy that I got, so going back to my gravel building, making this little road out and then extend like wider that way, it can sort of be like a big path to travel on. And I basically did this until I ran out of gravel, I had two stacks to work with from the mine, and at least now it looked like my house had a pretty decent, you know, path started. And with that, I was liking the progress that we had at least made so far towards the first starter house. I went and grabbed some of the bones and made them into bone meal, just that way I could use it on the grass to create some more grass, and now it looks pretty fucking nice. I mean, really, like, ideal, in my opinion, for a starter house. I didn't like the forehead of it, so I put that little face there, and it looks a lot better now. Not much we can do at the start, but we can always change it later on. I went and grabbed some wheat seeds too. If you smash all the grass that's around, sometimes they'll drop some wheat seeds out of them. So by doing this, I got enough to grab about like 14 of them. And this way, the next morning, I could start my wheat farm. A wheat farm will let me to craft bread and other stuff, and it is, it is really useful. Now, the way I'm doing this isn't really ideal, but at least we have water supply there, and... We're able to place down all the wheat here and then collect it when it all grows. Hopefully I'll make an automatic farm eventually, but I have lots to do on this new world. After that, this is my first encounter with these guys. I didn't, I haven't seen these guys before. They look like villagers, but you know, sort of like gray. They didn't attack me though, so I left them alone. You know, I went to my own shit, went and grabbed some more wood for the base. I did this until nighttime. I also went and grabbed all the saplings and other stuff like that that had dropped from the trees. You usually want to do this just that way you can replant them eventually. And it's always nice to have this ready for like a tree farm or something. Now I could see an enderman outside so I wanted to attack him and try and kill him to get his ender egg. But he was teleporting all around slapping me. Now after this too, he's still attacking me. I'm getting attacked by a spider and that's not enough. A baby zombie has to jump in to add to it so I'm, I didn't think I was gonna win that one I was at two and a half hearts so I retreated back to the house and then using a door I could take off Enderman easily and then go after the spider and baby zombie who dropped a carrot which is actually pretty nice so we can start a carrot farm soon now in the morning I went outside and immediately three of these guys just looked at me and started shooting at me I don't know why they're attacking me today, when the day before they weren't, but I'm looking into them after this episode. I retreated back to the base though, and using the door method and a shield, I was able to basically attack the one guy and get him down. Then I approached the other two and blocked some of their hits, that way they wouldn't get too much damage on me, and was able to take both of them down, and then be marked with some little symbol. The other four that were near the llama were all still standing there too, and once I got near them, they all aggroed against me, so, so I did my best to attack all of them, and I was able to clear them all out. They dropped some stuff, but nothing like really useful or super cool, so that was pretty uh, interesting. <laughs> 
But that's where we decided to wrap up this play session or episode of a progression video. I hope you guys liked this video and if you did make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel for more. I figured this would probably be one of the best series to run simultaneously alongside other ones and for a long period of time. So I hope you guys do enjoy it and let me know any ideas that you have for it as well. Anyways though, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.